Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the FPL Scope YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at some players that might potentially break the template in Fantasy Premier League. So we're going to take a look at three players in each position who might become really popular options depending on if they go on loan to a different team and become starters there or if they stay with their current team and become starters for that team. So we're going to talk about the goalkeepers first and uh, the first player we're going to talk about is a current player that's probably in the template. He's actually in the template team currently and that is Alphonse Areola. But I still think he is potential template breaker if he is confirmed as West Ham's number one goalkeeper, which is kinda assumed. He's sort of like a 50-50 or like 60-40, 70-30 split between him and Fabianski, who's going to be the starting goalkeeper for West Ham. But I think if David Moyes confirms before the season that Areola is the new number one in the league, I think this might be a potential huge shift where people might switch to two 4.0 goalkeepers. And that is especially something that could happen if either of these other two goalkeepers move clubs as well because we have Cayman Kelleher for Liverpool who's a really talented goalkeeper he's proven in the cups for Liverpool to be a really good goalkeeper he's been their hero in penalty shootouts and stuff for Liverpool and he's 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 looking like a really good goalkeeper in general I, I feel like but he has been linked with uh, going to Wolverhampton and Wolverhampton in their case might actually sell Jose Sa to a different club potentially in Nottingham Forest as well so but he is 5.0, but Kelleher is 4.0. He is the cheapest possible price for a goalkeeper in FL. And if he moves to become the starting goalkeeper for Wolves, he becomes a 4.0 starter for a team that has a currently that currently has a 5.0 starter as a goalkeeper. And I think Kelleher could go, could do really really well at Wolves, not only because he's a great goalkeeper, but also because Wolverhampton have been at least historically been pretty good defensively. So I think under Lopetegui, Lopetegui is in his first proper season with Wolves. I think. Wolverhampton might keep more clean sheets than we expect them to and with Kelleher in goal we've seen this in the past we've seen guys like uh, Henderson move on loan to both Sheffield United and Forest I think and we've also seen uh, other huge goalkeepers like uh, Emmy Martinez go from Arsenal to Aston Villa and become like the best options in Fantasy Premier League so I think the same thing can happen with Kelleher if he moves on loan to Wolves and that might potentially change our whole outlook on what we do with our, with our goalkeepers we might Currently, Onana is like the favored goalkeeper in the game, and he is 5.0. So you can actually save 1 million and have not that much worse of an option in Kelleher. The final option is Tom Heaton, who similarly might move from a big six club, Man United, to go on loan to Luton. He's been very heavily linked with Luton, so he's not potentially that big of a template breaker or game breaking player, uh, Heaton. But if he moves to Luton and becomes the starting 4.0 goalkeeper, Again, that's just another option for 4.0 you can have in goal. So you, you might be able to spend just 8 million on two starting goalkeepers for two separate Premier League teams, which would be amazing. So especially if we get even more of these 4.0 starters, if Hennessy is in goal for Nottingham Forest, for example, if they can't get Henderson across the line, we can we can find some, some goalkeepers that you can mix and match and have really good rotating goalkeepers for only 8 million in total. So, so yeah, these are some really good potential template breakers in goal, but... Goalkeeper is, to be honest, the least interesting position. So we're going to move on to some more interesting positions. We're going to move up to the defenders, then the midfielders, then the forwards. And straight away, we can move on to the defenders and three potential game-breaking or template-breaking players in defense. The first one is very well known already. It is Malo Gusto for Chelsea. He was listed as 4.0 for some reason, which is really strange because we all know Reese James is going to get injured at some point this season like he always gets injured and if he gets injured then Malagusto is a hundred percent replacement for him I think this season I think I don't think a single game for Chelsea will go without either Reese James or Malagusto at right back perhaps if if both or if both get injured then, then sure they won't play at the same time but assuming one of them is healthy they're going to play right back for Chelsea every single game. So I think a, a pretty viable option actually in FBL might be to start with Reese James and Malo Gusto at the same time. Like Gusto is your 4.0 defender and he comes in to start for Reese James if Reese James is not fit, which will probably happen by like game week three. Uh, but anyways, I feel like that's like a foolproof way to have a pretty good attacking Chelsea defender. The one downside with this, with this tactic is that Chelsea have a lot of low price players this season, a lot of players that might potentially break out and become really good. You have Nkunku for 7.5, you have Nicholas Jackson who's looked really amazing in, in preseason for 7.0 as a forward. You have guys like Sterling and Mudrik who, who are priced really low and could become really good players. So there's a lot of good Chelsea options to be honest. So that's why I'm sort of leaning against the Reese James Molo Gusto combo, but 
for the start of the season when we don't know how good Chelsea will be, I think it's it's a viable strategy for sure. And especially if Rhys James gets injured, if especially if he gets injured before game week one, Malagusta is going to be in every single team in FPL. So he's a huge potential game, game-breaking player, but he's also someone that is really well-known as a potential game-breaking player because everyone has already seen that Rhys James gets injured most of the time and Malagusta is a perfect replacement for him for 4.0 if that happens. But we'll move on to a different player from a different top team, uh, that current champions, Man City, and that is uh, Sergio Gomez. And uh, he didn't really play that much for City last season. He he hasn't really gotten that much playing time since since joining City at all. And especially with City's sort of like new system, it's not entirely new with the inverted fullback system. But the way City played last season in in defense with Stones as like a DM most of the time. I don't think Gomez has like a proper fit with Man City. So there are reports that he wants to stay at Man City and fight for his place, but I feel like he is pretty far off being a starter for Man City. As you can see, the status for him is fifth choice. There's so many different players. I mean, they play they play with sort of three at the back where the left turn most, like the defender mostly to the left uh, in defense is either Guardiol or Nathan Ake. You can even have Laporte and stuff as well in the defense. They don't really play with a proper uh, left back uh, in in real life really anymore so i think gomez even though he wants to stay i think he is better off going on loan and there is a certain club burnley that is linked with him or have been linked with him this summer and burnley still don't really have a proper left back they have vitinho who is sort of like a like we say in a region at least potato who can be used everywhere i guess that's a term in english as well but uh anyways he's uh, sort of like a potato vitinho who who most likely is the starting left back it's either him or charlie taylor like the former fpl uh known burnley player but burnley had ian Matson from the or from uh, chelsea last season on loan and he was really good for them and played a vital role in them going up to the premier league so i still think they need a new left back and if that left back is sergio gomez he is 4.0 he's going to play super attackingly in uh, with Burnley uh, you know Connor Roberts on the other side uh, on the right hand side for Burnley is 4.5 and he's still like an okay option at least the 4.5 defenders were still a good option in, in NFL but Gomez for 4.0 with Burnley would be an amazing choice and I think he'd be straight in tubes every single team really uh, in fans Premier League so he is a potential template breaker as well finally we have Kieran Tierney who has been really linked with or really linked he's been linked a lot with Newcastle lately either Newcastle or going back to Celtic and we all know Kieran Tierney is is a fantastic player he's a fantastic FPL player as well when he's fit and playing he's shown that with uh, Arsenal but that's just been the problem he hasn't been fit and playing uh, that much for Arsenal at all and I think Tierney actually claimed last season that he wasn't injured for a single match he just wasn't used that much for for Arsenal which is is fine they played Sinchenko they played like a different system sort of like Gomez he's sort of trapped in a, a system that doesn't benefit him that that well but if he moves to Newcastle he could be their next sort of trippier reclamation project someone who has been really good in Premier League before and then finally gets a chance to play in his proper role for Newcastle and be a really good player so if Kieran Tierney moves to Newcastle he's only 4.5 you have a much better option than Botman. I know Botman is a really popular option currently for Newcastle. He's 4.5, plays playing for one of the best defenses in the league. But Botman has virtually no goal threat at all. Meanwhile, Tierney would be amazing goal threat. So, you know, Trippier is 6.5 on at the right back position. And of course, he also takes set pieces and stuff. So he would be a better option disregarding price if we compare him and Tierney. But if Tierney moves to Newcastle, I think he could be potentially a fantastic player who might be one of the best value players of the whole season so he's a potential template breaker for sure as well so those are three decent options in options in defense there are other 4.0 defenders someone like Jared Branthwaite as well who if he starts for Everton might be a really good shout as well so there are a lot of good template or potential template breakers in defense so you got to just pay attention to transfers and potential things happening in preseasons as well like Reese James getting injured or someone potentially breaking into the starting lineup like Branthwaite for example Let's move on to the midfielders, and we have three decent options here as well, starting with Alejandro Garnacho, who is priced at 5.0, which I think is sort of crazy, because he could have easily been a starter towards the end of last season when he was injured for quite a lot. But Man United have Rashford, obviously. He is currently the striker for Man United, as they are looking for a new striker. They are potentially going with Rasmus Hoyland. As uh, or Hoylund, as they say in Danish, uh, as a striker, and that might move Rashford to the, to the left wing where he's usually playing, and that's where Garnacho is at his best as well. So that could hinder Garnacho a lot. But 
if Man United, for some reason, don't sign a striker and Rashford has to play as a striker, then I think Garnacho is probably the starter for, for Man United at left wing. Potentially. I, I mean, they could play Sancho there, but Sancho has been sort of like on and off. And uh, they have Anthony, of course, playing at right wing, who might also play rather than Sancho. They could play, could play Garnacho on the left and uh, Sancho on the right. If Anthony doesn't play, I think Anthony is a starter at right wing pretty... Uh, I, I think he's pretty secure star at right wing for Man United, uh, but him and Sancho will at least compete for that place. And Garnacho might be playing left wing as well. And if Garnacho is a regular starter for Man United for 5.0, that is fantastic value. I mean, most of us have either Rashford or Bruno, and they are 9.0 or 8.5. So imagine getting a Man United player for 5.0 in that same attacking position. That would be amazing. So I think Garnacho could be a really good player at some point this season whether that's through injuries or if he just breaks through sort of like Martinelli last season for Arsenal, I think Garnacho could be severely underpriced at 5.0. I think it's a pretty weird uh, price point, to be honest. I, I think he should have been 5.5 at least, or maybe 6.0 even. Because if he starts playing regularly for Man United, who are a top four team, a team fighting for Champions League places, he could be amazing value. So so yeah, I think he's, he's a great option. Then you have Cole Palmer for uh, Man City. He's also a really talented, really good player. But Man City don't really have a history of loaning out players to Premier League rivals. I, I feel like that doesn't really happen that much. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can um, correct me in the comments. But Cole Palmer has been linked with two different teams as well. He's been linked with Brighton quite heavily. And that might also change the template just because he is primarily a left-wing player. So... If he goes to Brighton, then that's just another potential rotation player that Mitoma has to deal with as well. So Mitoma has been like the, the most nailed sort of Brighton pick in terms of the template. And if Cole Palmer joins Brighton, then Mitoma isn't even safe in the team. So that might change the template just from that alone, from Mitoma getting more competition. But even if Palmer moves to Burnley, he'd be a starting 5.0 winger and a really good player as well. Like he has a lot of talent. He's been getting a lot of, or not a lot of, but he's been getting some chances for Man City as well towards the end of last season, for example. He's proven himself that he could be a really good player. He was really good for the under-21s for, for England, and he's just a really good player in general. So if he moves to either Brighton or Burnley, he's also another fantastic option to consider. So I think he he could be also a potential template breaker. Like, that is the, the point of this video. But finally, we have Giovanni Lo Celso for uh, Tottenham, and he actually scored in their preseason game against West Ham. Obviously, Spurs lost because West Ham are better than Spurs. I'm a West Ham fan. Uh, but uh, anyways, he played as one of the number eights for, for the Spurs. So if you don't know uh, Postacoglu's system, he usually has, he has, three, he has a midfield three where one of the guys is pretty much like the anchor of the midfield. It's going to be either Heuberg or it's going to be Bisuma or potentially Skip or Papasar or someone like the they have a lot of options in midfield to be honest and Los Celso is among them but apart from this anchor in, in midfield they have two midfielders that are quite attacking and go pretty far up the pitch so obviously Madison has one of these spots nailed down he's going to be the nail player he costs 7.5 for a reason but Los Celso might potentially be the other player in this role especially at the start of the season with Bentancur injured Bentancur is injured for like a month I think so he's probably the presumed starter from the start of the season but Lo Celso currently is fighting for a place in the team with either Bisuma or Ndombele mostly for Spurs. And if he is a starter for 5.0, he has shown in the past that he could score a lot of goals. He played for Betis the season before he joined uh, Spurs. He played, uh, I think it was like 28 matches for Betis and had 9 goals and 5 assists in the league. And that's proper assists. That's not even FPL assists. So maybe he got more assists that would have counted in FPL at least. But... Lo Celso has proven that he could be a really good attacking player, and if he is a 5.0 starter for Spurs in a pretty attacking role, then he's a fantastic option. So you got to pay attention to the preseason games, see if he actually gets some more starts, if he if he seems like a good player to play play with, because he scored against West Ham and he has a lot of talent. Like he was a really important player for Argentina in the lead up to the World Cup. Then he got injured and wasn't available in the World Cup. But if he had played in the World Cup, he could have been one of those guys that are, have been talked about because that midfield with McAllister and Enzo Fernandez and stuff has been uh, brought up a lot because those players really broke out in the World Cup. And Los Celso really could have done that as well. And he hasn't really gotten anything to work with Spurs so far, but he's also had some managers that are really... They, they have their favorite players and then they sort of throw the, the rest of the team under the bus meaning Mourinho and Conte. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of either of those managers, to be fair. But under Postacoglu, I think Lo Celso could be fantastic value for 5.0. 
if he regains uh, or gains the starting spot for Spurs, which which he could really do. It's Bissouma and Dombele, like I said, who are his main rivals, but he could easily be the midfielder next to Madison. He's he's also, apart from being a, a pretty good attacking midfielder, if he gets played in that position, he's also pretty good defensively as well. So uh, he can at least cover at least uh, cover most of the pitch for Spurs. So I think he has a decent shot of being the starter for Spurs. If not him, then maybe Ndombele for 4.5 if he uh, if he's the starter. I think the final midfield position for Spurs is, is really interesting to to watch before the season because, yeah, if it is Los Celso or even Ndombele, they, they are potential game-breaking players for sure. Moving on to the forwards, the final section, and uh, we sort of have a joke suggestion at first, that is Lukaku. The picture is from his... Uh, Apology interview with Chelsea after the whole Sky Italia thing. Ever since that happened, he has been persona non grata at Chelsea. Hasn't really been favored at all, but he's still with the team and he still doesn't look like he's going to move anywhere. And currently Chelsea only have Nicholas Jackson as their striker. Apart from Nkunku can play there as well, of course, but maybe Lukaku, Pochettino have a heart-to-heart and they figure out that Lukaku is... After all, a striker that has scored more than 100 goals in the Premier League, like he, he has proven in the league, he has been fantastic in the past. And sure, he's somewhat of a joke player right now, but if he could get the starting goal for Chelsea, he would be amazing value for 7.0 if he started for them. He costs, I think, 11.5 or 11 or 10.5, somewhere around, the, around those lines when he joined Chelsea. And he looked like good value at the start of the season as well. I remember that game against Arsenal where he looked absolutely unplayable, so... Lukaku, of course, sort of a joke suggestion because I don't feel like Chelsea and Lukaku go together at all. It feels like those those guys just will never coexist perfectly. It has never worked out. And it's such a shame, really, for, for the whole career of Lukaku and stuff. But what you're going to do? The man has been the, the highest transferred player in football history. £291 million pounds he has been sold for to different teams, which is crazy. And especially now, if he goes to Saudi Arabia, that number might or will exceed more than... 300 million which is crazy for a single player uh, so yeah minus he, he hates Chelsea he <laughs> uh, Chelsea and Lukaku just don't go together so I don't really think uh, he has that good of a future for Chelsea but we'll see stranger things have happened in, in football before moving on to a different player who is definitely more favored in his team and among his fan base and that is Julian Alvarez for uh, Man City he is fantastic he is only 6.5 so you know, if Holland gets injured, which has happened in the past quite a lot, actually, he was really fit last season and didn't really get that much injured. But if he gets injured, then everyone will be buying Alvarez for sure. 6.5 for the starting striker for Man City would be crazy value. So, so yeah, I think if Holland gets injured, Alvarez is the most essential player in the whole game, seeing as he would replace the currently most essential player in the whole game in Holland. But even if Holland doesn't get injured, I feel like Alvarez could start a lot of matches for City. He did that towards the end of the last season, and Pep has shown that he really likes Alvarez. And Alvarez keeps scoring now in preseason. He is a fantastic striker. I feel like he would start for pretty much every single team in the league, apart from City, when it comes to strikers. Potentially not Spurs with Kane, but like apart from that, like he is, he is such a good player. So I feel like whether Holland gets injured or not, Alvarez could be a fantastic player, fantastic pick for 6.5. I'm even considering him as a potential player in my game at one team, even if Holland is, is fit for the start of the season, because I feel like Alvarez might be the one to play rather than Foden and those guys. Uh, but anyway, especially if Holland gets injured, he is 100% a template breaker, even a game-breaking player for uh, Fans Premier League if he gets the starting spot for Man City at some point this season because of Holland injury. Another player that might be a starter, probably not for his own team or his current team, that is Fuller and Balogun for Arsenal. He was amazing on loan with Reims last season. Reims, Reims, I don't even know how to say it in French, but he was amazing in Liga last season on loan. He scored, I think, 17 goals. Yeah, it says 17 goals in Liga, so I have to trust my own uh, my own writing there. But, but yeah, he has been linked with a lot of different clubs, mostly clubs from outside of the Premier League, but he has been linked with uh, Crystal Palace as well. That's one of the clubs. They are looking for striker Palace. They have Edouard, they have Mateta, and these guys that haven't really proven much in Premier League so far but if he goes to goes on loan to Crystal Palace then we have finally our starting 4.5 forward and that would completely change the game he would go into every single team as like the low price attacker of choice for sure so Balogun has shown that he's a really good player Arsenal have put a 50 million price tag on him for a permanent transfer he might go on loan to Palace he might get sold to a different Premier League club 
most likely he goes abroad to the different team and he doesn't feature in RFL teams at all, but he is for sure someone you should pay attention to and, and keep note of. So those have been some some really good options, I feel like, in uh, all positions. Just going through them again, Ariola, Kelleher, and Heaton in goal. You have Gusto, Gomez, and Tierney in defense. In midfield, you have Granacho, Palmer, and Lo Celso. You should also n- uh, note that Lo Celso, I didn't talk about this earlier, but he has been linked with Aston Villa, which is kind of weird because Aston Villa have such a good midf- midfield already with players like John McGinn not in my current starting 11 for them, I feel like. They have Douglas Luiz, they have Ubukar Kamara, they have obviously um, some other players that can play there, Ramsey can play there, Tielemans is a new signing there as well, but if Lo Celso goes to, to Aston Villa, he is probably in the in the plans for Unai Emery, who had him as a player for Villarreal, so he might be a good player there as well, but I feel like his best potential is with Spurs for 5.0 as a potential attacking number eight sort of player for Spurs, but he's also been linked with a lot of different teams in La Liga, he's been linked with Napoli, which is huge credit to him as well, like Napoli know what they're doing, they have they have uh, gotten some really good value picks uh, before, and the fact that they are considering Lo Celso should tell you something about his quality as well, so that was just a little tangent on Lo Celso that I forgot to mention earlier, but the strikers are Lukaku, which is sort of like a joke uh, uh, suggestion, Alvarez, who is the furthest thing from a joke at all, like he's a fantastic player, and then Balogun as the final option as well. So these are my favorite template or potential template breaking players. I don't know who yours are, maybe you have some other suggestions, maybe you like some other players that I haven't mentioned in this video, so please comment down below if you have any other suggestions for players that might potentially break the game or at least break the template uh, that is currently presiding in Fence Premier League. But anyways, that has been this uh, video. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I hope you will continue watching videos on this channel. I can see a lot of growth already in the channel. Uh, you should also check out the FPL guide that we have uh, in the description. It is at thevideoscope.com slash FPL guide, where you can see a lot of different squads, a lot of different uh, reviews of new players. You can see the starting lineups for all teams, or at least my projected starting lineups for all teams, and where I have these players in terms of potentially starting for their teams as well. So there's a lot to check out with the guide. There's a lot to check out with this YouTube channel. So I hope uh, I've managed to capture your attention enough for you to stay on. If you watch this entire video, then fantastic. Uh, it would be amazing. If you've seen a lot of my content before, you can you know that this is sort of how I end videos with a lot of rambling. So I'm just going to have to end it at some point, And that is right now. I'm going to end the video. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching. See ya and uh, goodbye.